Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at absorption costing and variable costing example. This topic is covered in managerial accounting, cost accounting, CPA exam, as well as the CMA exam. If you are studying for the CPA exam, I strongly suggest you check out my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. What I do is I can be a supplemental tool, a useful addition, an alternative explanation to your CPA material. And by doing so, I can increase your grade by 10 to 15 points where you can pass your CPA exam and move on with your life and focus on your career. Your risk is one month of subscription. Your potential gain is passing the exam. And if not for anything, take a look at my website to find out how well your university doing on the CPA exam or not doing. Also, I do have resources for other courses. So if you're taking other accounting courses, you can take a look at my website. Please connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. And on LinkedIn, you can view reviews from other students that use the system to pass the CPA exam. Please like this recording, share it, connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Reddit. Let's go ahead and take a look at this exercise. We have the annual data of Eli Electric Eyewear. They manufacture swimming goggles, and there are no beginning inventory finished goods in January. So here's what we have here. We have number of goggles produced, 245, number of goggles sold, 215. What does that mean? It means they still have 30,000 units unsold. In other words, in ending inventory. They sell each unit for $22. The variable manufacturing cost is eight. Sales commission per unit is five, which is a variable cost as well. Fixed manufacturing overhead, 1,470. Fixed selling, this is manufacturing, and fixed selling and administrative, 250. And we're gonna be, we're gonna answer several questions about this exercise. First, we're gonna prepare a variable and an absorption costing income statement, and which statement shows a higher operating income and why. So before we answer this question, can you answer which statement shows a higher operating income? Would it be the absorption costing and would it be the variable costing? So I'll give you a second to try to answer that question based on your understanding from my explanation from the prior session. Okay, and hopefully you know that absorption costing will have a higher operating income. Why? Why did I know this? The reason I know this is because I produced 245 unit and I sold to 15. So what's gonna happen under absorption costing, some of the fixed manufacturing overhead, some of this 1,470, some of it, some of it will stay on the balance sheet. It will not be expensed. Why? Because if you did not sell it, you don't expense it. However, this under variable costing, this 1,470,000, the whole thing will be expense on the income statement. So there can, there's going to be a difference because the whole amount will be expensed here, not here, not under absorption costing. As a result, absorption costing will have a higher income and variable costing will have a lower operating income. Now let's prove that, but that's the basic idea of variable versus absorption costing. But let's show this. Let's first look at our revenues. Our revenues is 215,000 unit times $22, 4,730,000. Our cost of goods sold first, we are preparing, this is the absorption costing income statement. Variable, $8 per unit times 215,000, which is 1,720. Fixed the fixed manufacturing overhead. Now what we did is we took 1,470 divided by the unit produce, and it's 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 a good idea to see what is our manufacturing cost per unit because that's important to see that. If we take fixed manufacturing overhead cost divided by the unit produced, we notice that our fixed manufacturing overhead. Oh, I did 254. Give me one second. 1,470 divided by 245,000 unit. Our fixed manufacturing overhead cost is $6 per unit times 215, 1,290. Together, they'll give us 
3 million 10,000 which our which is our cost of goods sold therefore our gross profit sales minus cost of goods sold 1 million 720 we have now um, selling an administrative cost the variable component 215 uh, times five dollars which is the sales commission and fixed cost of 250 now we're going to take gross profit minus our selling at administrative we get to our operating income 395,000 copy this number down let's take a look at the variable at the variable or contribution margin income statement starting with sales should be the same then we're going to have to compute our variable cost which we have variable manufacturing cost and we have variable selling and administrative expenses in total our contribution margin notice the terminology which is sales minus the variable cost is 1,935,000 then we're going to deduct fixed cost which is manufacturing fixed cost remember this number 1,720,000 the whole thing is expensed here here we only expensed 1,290,000 okay so there's a difference between the two there's a difference between the two so 1 million i'm gonna put the number here 1 million 290 this is the absorption costing here we have only uh let's see here we have uh, 1 million 470 that's the difference as i told you that's the difference then we're gonna then we're gonna expense selling an administrative then we're gonna take contribution margin minus the fixed cost will give us 215,000 so notice as i told you 215,000 is lower than than what lower than the operating income for the absorption under the absorption costing our operating income was 395,000 under the variable costing the 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 uh, the profit the operating income is 215 now what we have to do let's find the difference between the two and try to explain that difference and basically we did explain it but i want to show it to you again just to kind of prove prove that ex explanation minus 215 minus 200 and 215,000 so the difference between the two is 180,000 well let's find the difference between this number and this number one two nine zero mm, oops one two nine zero one million two hundred and ninety thousand minus one million four hundred and seventy thousand will give us 180,000 again the difference is 180,000 and what is that difference really composed of well what is composed of it's the 30,000 unit that's an ending inventory that we did not sell under the absorption costing and remember the fixed manufacturing cost per unit I computed for you which is $30 and that's your 180,000 and this is your 180,000 and this is your 180,000 so that's the difference between the two method that's the difference between the two method so um, which statement shows a higher operating income and why we just explained it we just explained the uh, what's going on here uh, which is the which is the uh, conventional method shows a higher operating income which is 30,000 unit what's remaining times 30,000 unit times six dollars so let's take a look at the third question electric uh, eyewear marketing VP believes that a new sales promotion cost 60,000 would increase sales to 220 should the company go ahead with this promotion well we're currently selling 215 and we're gonna go up to two 20. so we are going to sell an additional 5,000 unit is it worth it well how do we know whether it's worth it or not we have to find out how much contribution margin those additional 5,000 unit will provide us so we're selling each unit for $22 we have $8 in variable variable selling cost and I believe 8 and what else 8 and 5 let me go back here eight and five eight dollars and five eight minus five so we have a contribution margin of nine dollars per unit contribution margin equal to nine dollars per unit now what we do is if we're going to take nine thousand times 
$9 times 5,000 additional units, what we're going to get is 45,000 in additional contribution margin. This is the additional contribution margin. We have to compare this to 60,000. So we have negative 60 plus 45. From an accounting perspective, it's not worth it. Okay, from an accounting perspective, we say it's not worth it from numbers perspective. Now, it could be other reasons why we should go with this promotion. It may increase our brand or whatever, but we're not concerned about this here. We're, we're strictly concerned with numbers. If we are concerned with numbers, then we will not undertake this promotion. We will not undertake this promotion. Again, at the end of this recording, I would like to remind you to visit my website, farhatlectures.com, especially if you are studying for your CPA exam. I can help you understand the material differently. I can help you understand your CPA review course better. In turn, which will help you increase your score by 10 to 15 points, help you pass the exam, focus on your career. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.